Um, today is going to be the promised, well, promised release of the How to Build the Flickering Geist. Um, now, small disclaimer that I need to address whether I like this or not. I couldn't get nearly the result that I would call satisfactory. I tried. Oh, I tried. But there's a shoulder pieces that goes for this mech. Let me show you. If it's the image is a flicker ray. Flicker ray and image are not showing. This is bad. Uh, image. Okay. Browse. Looks like I'm having some technical issues, my dude, but fear not, it, it'll, it will be easily settled. There you go, this is the thing. There's a blue piece on those shoulders that try as I might, I... I can't get close. But you need to understand that this image I'm showing you guys right now... ...actually leads to the backpack of this mech, and the backpack of this mech is too unique for this game. It's not unique, like, it, it, unique, not, not as hard to make, just too much for this game. As you can see, the actual spolder, I think that, like, protrudes from, from its back onward. That's actually a part of the thrusters. And then it goes backward. That nah, it goes outward, not backward. I can't do that. So, I'm gonna be using the V2 body, uh, the V2 body. <laughs> the v2 backpack and i'm gonna try to reproduce the blue parts but they won't be interconnected that's part of the things i can't do as well the other thing although i sort of patented a pile of bunker for this mech it will never act as a pile of bunker i am basically using the grappling hook from sorry about that the grappling hook from the blitz that i've tried to customize in the if bunker so it's a dual utility weapon, you basically grapple people with it and then you stun them. It's not lost, but it demands some coordination. <laughs> it's not going to be an optimal mech for battle, as it's not going to be the thing I wished it was. But it's going to look the part. That's the important thing. Now a few disclaimers, early right now, I am not going to use any DLC part for this. This is DLC free, as far as I remember. Second. This is a Super Robot War unit, the Flickering Geist. And the Flickering Geist, as any Super Robot War unit goes, that's an OG, can equip many a weapon that are not on the mech at base. You can have vessels, you can have it carry machine guns, bazookas, orbital rays! Same goes with the melee weapon. You can have this thing have a gun or hammer or something similar to that effect. You can have it have a beam saber, you can have it have a physical blade, a sight anything really so any weapons I will show to you that are melee and or ranged can be changed to your preference so if despite everything I said you still want to make this mech let's go cuz I got a thing for you my boys so assemble let's get a let's get us the show let's get the show rolling so Oops, wrong button. As far as the piece goes for this mech, you're gonna need the following piece. You're going to wow, my bad. You're gonna need the following pieces. Oh, uh, melee wise, I gave this thing a claw, so but I'm gonna give it a melee head right now. It doesn't really change the fact. Uh, I'm gonna have it fight with its bare fist, which is not so bad. Uh, as far as the rifle go, I figured, hey, I usually equip my guy, I usually give Flickering guys and the like a all attack weapon, so something that would be, let's say, a beam magnum, yeah, that, that'll fit right in, actually. That's actually the type of, the type of thing they have, style-wise. So, the head, we're going to be going fetching here a Sazabi head, so... Oh, put up, put up, put up. We're gonna awaken all. Well, we can unlock all my bot. Scroll down. Doggy, Simo, strike, strike. 
to nudge you. I was there. Sizabi, there we go. You want to say to be Master Gray? Body. I have two type of body. For now, I'm gonna be showing you guys the Virtue version of this of this build. So, go to Virtue. Let's see here. And uh, you'll want this to be high grade. So, boom. Arms. We're going to be using the wing on the Proto Zero arms. So, scroll down, to, scroll, scroll down, down to the W's. Uh, we'll go down Proto. Once again, Master Grade. Legs. We're going to be using. That one's actually easy. The TR. Gap Plant TR5 Ryro. Ryro? Fryer? Uh. Correct me, guys. <laughs> so. Q. Gap, gap, gap. Come on, gun. I passed it. Gaplan Ryru DR5 High Grade. Boom. If you use it Master Grade, you're just gonna really fudge up the scaling for the unit, so. High Grade it is, but dudes. Backpack. That's where I said things get sketchy, whether I like it or not. Due to what we have to deal with, I still will recommend the V2 backpack. It is the closest thing we get to the the fin, the thruster system this thing uses. I mean, victories. You're uh, going anywhere. V2 has the approach bearing thing, but it's not properly placed and not properly angled, but it's the closest thing we can get. So, shield. Uh, for the sake of having a shield, we do can use a GNX. So, I'll show you guys a measurement real quick. We're speaking about positioning minus 158 for you. 300 for Y. Yes, Z is neutral. Rotation, 15 for you. Y is going to go to 122. So, there we go. And lastly, Z is neutral with a scale of minus 300. That way, you do can have a GNX, GN shield that gives you a GN field. And nobody sees it. So, Builder's part. Boop, 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 boop. Let's get the show the road real quick. First part we're going to do is that barrel-ish machine gun the Flickering Geist uses on a daily basis for its range engagement. That thing that's a bit uh, bronze chromed, not too sure. But you get what I'm going on right now, so. Boop. You guys will go want well, to scale up to the beam machine cannon for the left arm. So head, body, bone arm, left arm, there we go, past it like an idiot. Uh, where are thou? Beat machine cannon. There we go. That's what we want. Uh, and placement number two. Now, please follow the following steps. X seventy four positioning. You will want two thirty three for Y. Scale that hell up. Derp derp. Minus one seventy four for Z. Rotation, 6 for X. Rotation for the Y is going to be at 200. Lastly, the rotation Z at 110. Scale of the reds at 0, and there you have it, people. It perfectly merges with your arm. No question asked. Second part is going to be the rocket hanker. That's basically the spike for your uh, <laughs> for your bunker, basically. For the pile driver, this mech uses on a daily basis. It's going to be on the right arm, second emplacement. So body, boat arm, left arm, right arm. Uh, rocket anchor. There we go. X-124. twenty-four. One twenty 
for everything else. I am not kidding you. Outside of the scale remains neutral, and you want to scale this thing down to minus 184. Alright, we got ourselves the rocket anchor set. Next one, the IF generator, which is going to basically become the gun part of this assembly. I'll show you guys a picture after that so that you can actually try to imagine what I did. <clears throat> it's going to be similar to the fact that there's only going to be one part with a measurement in the scaling. So, with that said, body, bone arm, left arm, right arm, IF bunker. Uh, there. High F generator. There we go. So X minus sixty. You want this at second emplacement? All right. Then you go to the scaling real quick and you jog that down all the way to minus one thirty nine. And boom, there you have it. Now, to put an image, of course, you still have to color it, but to try and show why I'm showing you that, uh, to show, to, uh, to display what we're making, I can't make, I cannot craft a gun barrel and just teach it to the arm, it just doesn't stick. So the best I figured I'd do, second best thing would be to make this little combo a thing. It still looks great on use. I mean, you can still grapple somebody, tap another arrow, and then use the IF generator to just stun them in place for another combo. You do what you do. You do what you will. Things works wonderful, actually, in PvP. But I digress. Back to building. My bad. So boop, boop. I got my instruction back on time. Next is going to be a solar reactor. Uh. You know what? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. That's a piece I had. If I would use a different torso altogether, so more of that later, maybe. We're gonna skip instead to the beam cannons. Now, beam cannon, the shit. That's the closest thing I could manage to find for the actual blue part this unit has on the shoulder, which an actual weapon she uses daily on the battlefield. So, you'll want a boat harm beam cannon. Body. Boat harm. And we're looking for the beam cannon. First emplacement, so be sure to be on the good side. Following measurements apply 92x. <clears throat> Minus 125 for Y. Minus two tw 233 for Z. So, boop. Moving down to rotation, guys. Minus 8 for X. 58 for Z. The rotation here is going to be 35 for, for Z. Chalk that up a bit. There we go. Scaling your call? It's supposed to really approach you behind you and then link itself to your actual booster, the upper part of the blue and yellow thing, the fin. Those parts are supposed to be merged, but it's impossible as you can see. Actually, it's impossible if you want to keep the gun aligned where they are. Uh, once again, I'll show you a picture to just make my point. I don't want to force this. I don't want to force it on you guys. I just... I would feel bad if I didn't show you the progress I made with it. So, boom. There it is. Now we're going to do a bit of coloring because... Yeah, we're, we're done with the actual parts. You guys still have two slots you can use for whatever you see fit. In a way, I do could shrink them down and try to superpose another pair of cannon. But then it would barely show compared to what you're supposed to get, so that's why I'm a bit nebulous. The cannon really is the part where I start to be iffy. The rest, though, is pretty pretty clear cut. So we're gonna go to setup real quick. I will load up the actual mech already painted because it's easy for me to show you the card that way. 
and we're gonna roll up the final part of this stream, well stream, <laughs> how to build a tutorial. One day's gonna load though. Maybe, there we go. Load design. That's the Veert version, for those wondering, that was the other version right here using the Gushion Rebake body, which is a DLC part, but that's not the reason why I'm iffy about showing you that one. It's because I'm using a solar reactor that I stuck to the main body. And when you start changing the body positioning, this thing moves with it, and it looks awkward as uh, fuck. So, we're gonna load that one, go to paint real quick. Weapon will not be painted for the sake that you, once again, Super Robot War Unit, make the weapon the way you want it, and it has so many weapon plays. Head! We're going to get ourselves a white of... Well, the white can be applied for every part, by the way. So I'm going to just show you... Case, wow! I will now showcase you the sixth color we're going to be using for this spec. Dominant for the top part, the white. 94 brightness, 238 red, green, and blue. That's still across the board. A... Navy blue? Nah, that's too light. Well, a blue of 53 brightness, 48 green... Seven, 48 red, 72 green, 134 blue. My bad for the mispronunciation. Boop, boop. Swapping ourselves to the body. We're going to be using a orange of full brightness, 100, 255 red, 152 green, and 9 blue. We're going to, oops, wrong button, my bad. We're going to be using yourself a pure black, zero all across the board. Nothing too complicated. And... For the arm, only for one piece, which is the Gatling, we'll need yourself a very dirty yellow. So, 37 brightness, 94 red, 83 green, and 26 blue. Once you got those tails, you're good. Oh, and last detail, I should have said ahead of time, but I keep forgetting. Once you're in the orb selection, like the builder's part, base selection color, or whatever other part for that matter, you can go on your, on your arm for what I want to show you. Once you have done a color, you can press triangle and go save them for the, and then quick select them when you want to paint your unit. That's what I'm going to be using to show you the colors. So, boop boop, we're going to backtrack back to the head. The following colors will apply. White, blue, white, white, blue, blue. As for the glow color, we're speaking about the 4 row, 4 orange, that's for the eye. And that red is third row, first red. Dudzo, super easy. Boop, body. White, white, orange, blue, black and white. Glow color for the part of harmonizing yourself with the uh, orb-ish, the the core, the core unit, if you will. The guys to call. You will want to put yourself a glow color, the same color as your as the orange we are using so far. So, 100 brightness to 55 red, 152 green, and 9 blue. It's the same value, and de facto, unless you're in an area that changes the uh, lighting, it's going to show the same. So that's the best I can do for the illusion of having a huge orange orb for the torso. It's honestly the best I could find, guys. Sorry about that. So, for your arm, there's a bunch of stuff on these arms, so bear with me. For the base arms themselves, the you, wow, black, white, 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 orange, and orange. For the machine gun, should be the first part you'll have to color: black, the dirty yellow, as we spoke for the barrels, black and black. Now we're going to be moving through the uh, grappling hook and the IF bunker uh, generator. My bad. Pure white for the hook. For the IF generator, you want the outside to be white. The inner parts should be black. And the uh, coloration on the side, I chose red. Totally up to you. But with the picture you, on the side, you can see why I picked what. So, you do you. But this is also, once again, my best try. I'm not trying to be cheap here. I it's just <laughs> I feel I felt like I would have cheated you guys after saying, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna make this guy 
I did just never make it. Because I just couldn't find something decent. Yeah. <laughs> I am defeated. For the beam cannon. White for the middle part so that it actually mixes well with your arm. Blue for the outer so that you actually have the uh, frontal blue and... Well, the yellowish orange in this case. You know, try to create the effect they have. Once again, I could try... Could have tried to put two of them together, shrink them down, but then it just disappears completely. You have a hard time seeing it and acknowledging it's even a thing. Legs! Black, black, red, orange, red, good old white, and I realize I never showed you guys what the red is. My bad. So here's a quick take at the red. 95 brightness, 240 red, 10 green, 10 blue. Sorry for not showing this to you guys on the first on the first go. I should have seen it earlier when I was uh, doing the color showcase. There was a red, and I, I derped. Sorry, dudes. Well, you've seen it. So, once again, black, black, red, orange, red, white. Glow part is going to be the third row, first red. Nothing too complicated. You want this to harmonize with the red you have on the skirt. Oh, uh, I'll get to the damage part and the caution mark at the end. No worry. For the backpack, everything should be white. I couldn't find an instance where I could actually paint the inner part of the rail. So... Never mind. I was blind this whole time? Or was I? Look at this. I'm going to flip that back out. Look like an idiot. And then it's going to be... No, that's what it is. Oop, my bad. White, black, white, white. Finally, the shield, I suggest pure white due to your uh, forearm being completely white. And I know it's supposed to be black, don't get me wrong. But once you're going to start coloring, when you put the top part of your shoulder in white, you actually also color the forearm. So, you're going to choose at that point. Sorry. <laughs> so, yep. This takes us back to the all unit where we're going to pick or caution mark. I could see these be blue just as well as I could see them be orange. So, for the sake of accuracy, I went with Fort Row, Fort Orange for everything. Boom, boom, boom. Now, if you want to apply yourself a battle... Re like, bit there, done that battle-hearted unit. I do have a little preset that I like to show people. So we're gonna go 30% washing, full airbrush, 30 chipping, 30 damage. That's usually for me my uh, battle-hearted unit. The type of paint, the type of effect I'm gonna use on it. After that, if you want to add gloss or metallic, totally up to you. They don't look bad per se, but I just like it as it is. So with that said, I hope this tutorial on how to make the flickering guys will make the game better for you. I hope this somehow helped or brightened your day. You never know. I'm probably going to be benching the series for a while, not because I don't want to make any more, but I will be starting two new Let's Play, one of which is going to be the Zeta 5, the other one is going to be Super Remote Wars J. Is that J? Yeah, J. From where you actually get yourself the Bells of Loot for the first time, as well as the Raft Plan. It's a Super Robot Wars that I got started on, and this is one that's really dear to me. Oh no, it's not the GBA, so I can understand why some of you would be like, eh, I don't wanna. So, yep. Yeah. Till next time, my dudes. Later.